Why did Jesus compare himself to a serpent? Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus told Nicodemus that no one can be saved unless they are born again. And that's when Nicodemus asked him, how can a man be born again? Does he have to go back inside the womb? So Jesus used an Old Testament story to help Nicodemus understand what it means to be saved. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So let's go to the story that he is referring to. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. This is the part in the Bible where God rescued his people from slavery in Egypt, and now they were on their way through the desert, and they were going to the promised land, which is Canaan. On the way, God would provide a bread from heaven, and this is what they're talking about, that there is no water or food, and they actually call the bread that God gave them worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. So what does this story have to do with being saved? Why did Jesus compare himself to this fiery serpent? Let's go back to what he said. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. What does it mean for the Son of Man to be lifted up? The people in the desert were rebellious and had a lot of disbelief. So God punished that sin. And the punishment for their sin was death through those serpents. God provided a source for them to be saved, which was a serpent. And when the people looked at the bronze serpent on that pole, they were saved. The punishment for their sins would be covered because they looked at the serpent. So Jesus is illustrating what he was doing in that through Adam, all of mankind fell into this rebellion, sin, and disbelief. And the consequence of sin is death. That's everyone's punishment. Not only physically, but spiritually. But God provided 
salvation for us of that spiritual death, which was he put his son on a pole, so to speak, on a cross. And when we look to Jesus and we believe the way that God has provided for us to be saved, then we are saved and we have everlasting life. It's interesting that this is the context, this is the story, this is Jesus' explanation to Nicodemus right before the very well-known Bible verse, John 3.16, which says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Can you see that visual that Jesus is giving us through the Old Testament? Can you imagine yourself being like in the desert and you have been bit by that snake and you know that it's death that's coming but God provided a way for you to be spared of that punishment. And so if we believe in Jesus, we can have eternal life. And it's also significant that Jesus used the words that God so loved the world. Because in the Old Testament, and other Jewish writings, it was only spoken about God's love for His people, Israel. But Jesus made sure to include everybody, the whole world. God provided salvation for the whole world. Anyone that would look to Jesus and believe that Jesus is the source of salvation that God has given to us to save us from the punishment that we deserved because of our rebellion and disbelief and he has provided salvation through simply believing in Jesus Christ and it's very interesting how God could have provided any other way to bring about his salvation for those people in the desert. He could have simply just killed all of the serpents or made them go away just like he brought them. He could have just taken them away. But no, God used this opportunity to paint a picture so that we could get a clearer picture and understanding about God's salvation for humanity.